So yeah, we're lucky enough to have Anton Creel here. Um, he started his career with uh, trading at about 16 with his own money and uh, then got recruited into Goldman Sachs, headhunted to Lehman Brothers, uh, JP Morgan before retiring, uh, traveling the world. Um, then he, you may know that he also uh, did a BBC program, Million Dollar Traders, and uh, proceeded to form his own company. And uh, next year, he's, he's going to travel to space, hopefully. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a pretty ridiculous career. I think we're going to learn a lot from this interview. Um, so if we could just have a warm welcome and a round of applause for Anton um, before we start. Um, okay, so let's make a start. Um, how did you get into the world of trading? Um, started trading pretty young, as you mentioned in the, in the introduction. Uh, started when I was 16, basically. So, grew up in Liverpool and uh, was watching documentaries on television about the markets. So this was like 1994, 95. And there was a lot of documentaries on TV about uh, Thatcher's Britain and how lots of guys in the, in the city were making lots of money. So I was watching these documentaries thinking I could do it because I'm clever in these guys. So, um, so literally opened a trading account with a local stockbroker uh, in the north of England. And back then it was all uh, physical stock. So you couldn't leverage or borrow money to trade. Um, so it was one for one cash trading in physical shares and really got into the IPO situations where you could buy stocks in the morning where you put in for the IPO allocation a few weeks earlier. You get the IPO allocation and without even paying for it and then you can flip the IPO like at lunchtime if it goes up, you know, 50, 100 percent because it was all a T plus three settlement. So you used to have to send the check to the stockbroker and then it'd be settled in three days. So you, you were able to flip IPOs and not actually pay for them. So really got into it that way. Okay, and you continued trading at university? Um, yeah, so at university, you know, it was 97 to 2000. So I was pretty lucky I caught the, uh, the tech bull market, the tech boom. So flipping IPOs and trading IPOs was actually really straightforward. And uh, university day used to be get up at 6 a.m., do an hour's research, market would open at eight, put on my positions, go to lectures, lunchtime, go in the computer room, flip them. But most of it was already done over, most of it was done over the telephone. So in my day, it wasn't so long ago, this was, um, this was before uh, broadband. So everything was dial up and you know, at home, it used to cost like a pound a minute to plug your internet in. So, and you used to only get quotes online. And when you pick up the telephone to trade, the quotes from the brokers would be totally different from what you see on the screen. So it was pretty slow and spreads were really wide. So you had to trade very volatile situations and then go home in the evening, do a bit of research and do the same again the next day. Was it that experience that got you into Goldman Sachs? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, the Goldman Sachs situation was a uh, you know, typical situation where they come around uh, on the milk round and do presentations. So obviously, you know, first, second year university, you go to all of these and you get to know all the companies. I'm sure here you have the same even today. Um, the, the track record, which is just all of your trades that you've ever done and your performance and your risk over return, uh, the track record you know, I basically told one of the traders on the desk at the presentations, um, you know, the amount of money that I made at university, all the situations I was trading, and they were really interested. So I, I basically had a telephone interview the next day and emailed them my track record. So the telephone interview was with the head of the desk, and then I was invited down the next week to have interviews and then offered the job on the, on the same day, basically. Okay. Do you, do you think that method still applies for 
getting students into the same, the, for us that want to follow in the same sort of path, mm. do you think that's the right way to go about getting a job, getting a trading job now? Um, one of the big problems with, uh, with apl applying to investment banks, hedge funds, uh, all financial institutions really, is a lot of the industries are in structural decline at the moment. So you're seeing investment banks culling tens of thousands of people in the Western world, uh, hedge funds pulling back on hiring, uh, the insurance industry pretty much the same. Um, but the amount of applications has gone up exponentially in the last 10, 15 years. Everyone seems to have an undergraduate degree now. Everyone has a master's. So, you know, differentiating yourself is really, really hard. Sure. Um, in my day, the way I differentiated myself was by doing as well. And I think it still really applies. If you can show something on your resume and show something in your experience where you've actually applied real trading methodologies and use real money, you stand out in a huge way. You know, everybody's got an undergrad with a 2-1. Everyone's got a master's. When I used to see CVs, I used to hire a lot of people in the industry. Um, piles of CVs would drop on my desk from HR. And HR's really just a filtering process. They don't know what makes a good trader. But they, the, the people tick all the boxes. So the CVs end up on the desk. But there's thousands of them. And it's literally sometimes just taking them and going, 2-1, masters, couple of good place institutions that you went to, nothing really interesting about this person, bin. <laughs> I mean, it, that, it, that sometimes that can be the process. Right. Okay, so you're, you're already trading. Once you're at Goldman Sachs, how did, how did they develop your ability? Um, well, you know, publicly, uh, you know, these companies, th these companies are public companies. So they're always going to say that they have official training programs. It's something, you know, public companies have to show their shareholders that they're being responsible in, um, in training their, the people that they hire. Uh, so you do have an official training program that you go on in New York, which is pretty much uh, sitting in a lecture theatre like we're here now for a couple of months. But also you're given a seat on, on the trading floor uh, on Wall Street. To be honest, what you learn in, those, in that situation is really about uh, applied finance, more like, that you would learn in a master's, um, but also the, the culture of the firm. And you get to meet everybody and all the right people in the US office. So you don't really learn how to trade or learn about your profession in practice. That's when you come back on the desk and really that's where, you, that's where you learn. Okay. Uh, so you spent about four years at Goldman's. Um, mm. What were your highlights? Uh, highlights, well, walking onto the desk in the first week uh, where it's all, all hands to the pump because it was the tech boom. So this would have been uh, June 2000. And uh, where they just give you, I mean, it was crazy. So they just give you a pot of money. With me, it was $10 million to start. They say, learn how to trade. This guy next to you is going to teach you what to do. Press this button to buy. Press this button to sell. And uh, because it was the tech boom, it was you know, every day walking in with pretty much very little experience saying, right, we're going we're gonna to give you some responsibility today. You know, after a couple of weeks, you're going to IPO this company. And I'm like, OK, so I'm on the other side of the IPO now that I'm used to. Um, and then next day doing a rights issue, raising capital for companies. Next day selling stakes in companies for large shareholders and pension funds. Um, so yeah, I mean, the first couple of months was a real uh, baptism of fire. You know, I thought I knew stuff. I didn't know anything until I walked onto that floor. Um, I guess uh, big trading situations. Uh, I mean, there's so many, but ones that you know, really stand out, probably uh, during the tech boom, doing all the IPOs, uh, 2001, September the 11th, huge situation in the market. Uh, the recessionary periods of 2002, uh, and then the takeoff of the market in 03, 04. Okay. Uh, we'll have a little pause now and get some audience questions, if anyone's got any so far. If not, don't worry. So you've looked at both sides, you've looked at both trading and also the investment banking side. Yep. It's really important for, for people who are trading, doing just one of those, to have experience in both. Mm. Do you think that helps you 
to become better at either one or because there's a lot of people yeah. who are going to be good at one part. Yeah, I, I really think so. I mean, you've, you've really got to do it in practice with real money. Um, <clears throat> if you get the experience doing that, even if you lose a little bit of money, you've got to see it as paying for the education of trading with real money. Okay. So even if you lose money and say to an investment bank or a hedge fund, this is my track record, I lost a couple of thousand pounds last year trading, they will look at that favorably. So you've got no downside in doing it. So as long as you show that you've done it, and you've traded for a year, <clears throat> and they say, well, what lessons have you learned? Well, I've learned not to do this. I've learned not to do this. The market last year was really tough. The fact that you're actually doing it means you're going to learn faster. So you, you're, because what, you know, there's a great saying, you're not trading until you've got a position, <laughs> right? Or you don't know anything about a stock until you've got a position. You know, so once you have a position in something, you're forced to learn and monitor your risk. So I think it's, it's, it's really, really important to do it. And you know, then going into the investment banking side, it is very, very different. So the approach to trading is very different in investment banks and hedge funds, the way professionals do it, compared to the retail trader or the man on the street. So you'll learn how to do that, but from the ground up, just having a position will teach you a lot. Particular area that you'd recommend for someone who has a little experience in the market, like forex or equities. Mm. Is there any area that you say better suited to beginners? Um, I would say, okay, in terms of volatility, you know, volatility creates opportunities for traders over any given time horizon, and that's what traders live and die on. They need volatility; otherwise, you can't make money. So. The Forex market, uh, you know, implied volatility over the last couple of years has been absolutely crushed. We've actually seen it tick up a little bit recently, especially in dollar yen, you know, huge moves. Um, Forex is, is good to learn in, but don't expect to make loads of money if you're day trading, because actually the, the volatility of Forex at the moment, of the major G10 currency pairs globally, is very, very low. So it's very difficult to make money over short periods of time. Um, in equities, generally, historically, volatility is higher than in Forex. 